Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, we're going to, to uh, begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we're thankful for the time that we have to study this morning, and we invite your spirit to speak to our hearts. We ask, Lord, that you can enlighten our minds, that you can give us wisdom and understanding and strength for the day. We pray that um, you can help us as we continue to look at these lines and understand them, and that um, this understanding can be a blessing to us and those around us. We pray for those who are struggling um, in various different ways, and we just ask, Lord, that your angels can watch over them. Be with us now, by thy spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning again. So um, there's a couple little little changes here on this Jephthah chart. So one is, for some reason, I had 43,011 days from December 6, 2020 to July 18, 2030, and it's 3,511 days, and that's the 490th prime number. So I'm not sure how I ended up getting 4511 in there, but uh, uh, anyway, it was... 100 off for some reason. And I think the 4511, uh, where did that number come from in the first place? Had we got that from somewhere? Okay. So that's what I'm trying to figure out where if there's some, because I might have got that number from something. I don't know from what. So this was obviously put in back in in March. So I don't know where we got that number one, four, five, one, one, why we had that. So let's so see something here. Anyway, so what we're trying to do in these lines as we've been going through it. So with Jeff, the, at the top left-hand corner, you'll see uh, the number of Jephthah. Um, let me just see if there was anything about this 4511. I'm trying to do two things at once. So the number Jeff of Jephthah's name is 3316. Now it's interesting if you double that number, you get the number of days between uh, September 11th 2001 and November 9th, 2019. Because if you count the, from the end of September 11th, you come to the beginning of November 9th, 2019. And that's just doubling that uh, number. Now, also, 3,316 days uh, go from March 7th, 2021 to April 5th, 2030. The significance of March 7th, 2021 is it's 1,700 years from the Sunday Law in 321, but it's also the day that we began examining the foundation in 2021. So March 7, 2021, we began the study of examining the foundation. And uh, so that's the significance of March 7, 2021. Uh, that it goes to April 5th, 2030 as 3,316 days is rather interesting. So now none of these dates are on this line in the line of Jephthah, but it could just say that Jephthah relates to these other way marks, to September 11th, to November 9th, and to March 7th, uh, which is a symbol of the Sunday law. And also connects to April 5th, 2030, which is going to be the fourth angel arriving in this line. Um, now, uh, when it comes to uh, the 4511 that I had, I don't know if I got it from anywhere. I think I might have, I'm not sure where I would have got it from. I do know that the word, the Hebrew number 4511, is in Judges 1133, um, and that is dealing with Jephthah's tragic vow, 
and that's just the name of Minith, but I don't think we use that number. So I'm not particularly sure why we counted from December 6, 2020 to July 18, 2030, and why we noticed the 490th prime. So I don't remember why we did that. Um, so I can't remember when we did that. Was it yesterday? I don't think so. Um, we did. I don't know. Anyway, that's there. So that's a, uh, uh, the word minith is the Hebrew number 4511. So that's all I know. Um, but that's in Jephthah's tragic vow, which we haven't actually got to in these lines yet. Now, so this line of Jephthah, um, like with all the lines, we want to take this line and look at the different verses and these ones we've already drawn out now we have judges 11 verse 4 obviously it could be judges 11 verse 1 to 4 yeah so we could just do that whoops another four there one to four um so whether that's uh the best way to do that i don't know now, as far as the darkness was concerned, um, we're starting this on June 22nd, 2014. Uh, this is relating to uh, what? So what is the darkness here? How did we define the darkness in this line? Because we have these 2014 dates, two of them, where there's an increase of knowledge. June 22nd is marking Noel's uh, presentation at that camp meeting. This is the second camp meeting in 2014. And then we have this January 11th, 2020 date. And it's 2030 days from June 14th to January 11th, 2020. January 11th, 2020 is uh, this date that Jeff marked as the end of the Levitical chiasm. So how do we tie this first message together? What What is this first message about? What's the time of the end here? Why are we doing this line this way? Let me know. <clears throat> so what would be what would be addressed here in Jephthah? What is Jephthah about the story? So we started going through this. So I guess we're gonna have to look at it again. So remember, Jephthah is this Gileadite, who's, um, he's the son of a harlot. And in chapter 10 of Judges, right, where it talked about this further disobedience, it's going to set up um, the fact that they're worshiping Baal, and they're going to be the under the oppression of um, uh the Philistines, right, and the children of Ammon, I think, is or it's just the Philistines. I think it's just the Philistines here, right? Oh, and the children of Ammon, right? So it was the Philistines and the children of Ammon. These two groups, they're going to be put into uh, oppression by these two groups because of their rebellion against God. Um. And then it says uh, that um, the anger of the Lord is hot against Israel. He sold them into the hands of the Philistines, into the hands of the children of Ammon. And in that year, they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. Now, as far as that year is concerned, 
what year is that? What, what, where would we place this? So the suggestion was that, that there's a period of time that they've oppressed and, and so trying to figure out what that year is, uh, we hadn't, um, we had different in opinions on that. And we're gonna have these two words in that year, they're gonna be vexed, ra'atz, and oppressed, oppressed, which is ra'atzatz. So very similar word, words. Um, but they're going to be basically uh, broken in pieces or harassed and and then uh, crushed in that year. So so is this year because it knows that they're going to be oppressed, the children of Israel, 18 years. So there's going to be 18 years of oppression. And we're going to find later that there's going to be uh, 11 years, or not 11 years, let me say, six years that Jephthah is judge. So there's 18 years here of oppression, six years that Jephthah is judge. And this is after those 45 years of Tola and Jair. So the question that we don't have an answer to is, does this 18 years count from the death of Jair, or is there some period of time in between in which they rebel, and then they're going to be oppressed for 18 years? So we don't have an answer to that question. Um, so one of the things about uh, 18 years, we know that Jephthah, if we take the number of his name, that is the number 3316, that this is nine years and one month. And uh, one thing we could say is that from September 11th to November 9th is this 18 years. Right? So would be, be looking at this period as the period of this disobedience and oppression. That we're going to take Jephthah's name, the Hebrew number of his name, we're going to double it, and we're going to get 18 years and two months, which the Bible talks about here as 18 years. So we're just using that as a symbol, right? Even though this is actually 18 years and two months, we're taking this 18 years, to refer symbolically to that period from 9-11 to 11-9. So they're going to be oppressed for 18 years. Now, in this chart that we have, so if we're going to take this information, we're just going to say that it represents something within this movement, a type of oppression, a Philistine oppression. And that, of course, is going to end with Parminder. Now, we have here in this line, though, specifically, we're starting it at June 22nd, 2014. We're not starting it at November 9th, 2019. Now, based on this information, maybe we should, right? But what we had taken is this is the six years of, of, of Jephthah, is going to go from 2014 to 2020. So that's that's what we have here. That's what we did before. Yeah, so Jephtha means he will open, related to uh, Mark 7, what is that verse? Uh, Mark 7, 34, in the loosening of the tongue, can we see a proclamation of the prophetic chronology? and righteousness by faith, and the loosening of the restraint on Islam, a gradual loosening of the plagues in our time. Well, 
it's a good question. Um, and we have a lot of questions here. So we did some things when we studied this. We we came to this conclusion that this was from 2014, and that that the story of Jephthah is going to be about December 6, 2020. Now, it could be that we're completely wrong in how we constructed this line, that we should start at November 9th, going to December 6, 2020. Just because we did something before doesn't mean we have to do it again. But we did have some verses and some reasons why we chose these dates. But it's fine if we uh, revise them. Now, the thing about Jephthah that we, uh, when we looked at the story of Jephthah, we just did this one line. Now, this line was rather interesting because of the numerical construction of it. That is, it has all of these dates that have all of these numerical connections. But when we look at the story of Jephthah, we have um, basically this part in Judges 10 that's going to address the darkness, this 18 years. And it's... Um, going to say that they repent because of this oppression so there's a repentance that occurs and then Jephthah is going to be called because now there's going to be this battle so they're going to battle against their enemy at the end of these 18 years we're going to have a symbol there January 11th and they're going to uh, call Jephthah now, first, we see that Jephthah, it gives the background of him. He's the son of this harlot, that they thrust him out. So we said this is a message that has been thrust out and that this message is going to be uh, called back, right? And then it came to pass in a process of time that the children of Israel made war against Israel. So it's going to give background information about Jephthah. And then in verse four, it's going to have this war. And, and in this war, uh, that the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tov. And so they wanted to make him their captain, right? So then he's going to end up being victorious. And, and then there's going to be Jephthah's tragic vow. And, um, so we sort of address this when you look at this line. Uh, Jephthah's tragic vow is going to deal with these dates, July 18th and June 22nd. It's going to deal with this history. Judges, basically July 18th is going to be about Jephthah's tragic vow. And that very well could be, right? But we don't know if this line is correct or not, right? So we have... Book again at the line. <clears throat> um, now, could we uh, revive this, uh, revise this line in some way? That is, could we mark the time of the end uh, as some other date? Or maybe... Um, you know, I don't know. I don't. It just seems to me that we have some indication that this line should begin at November 9th, 2019, not June 22nd, 2014. Right. Because if I take this Jephthah name, the number of Jephthah's name, and I even take some of the, the verses and what it's talking about, that they're going to be oppressed by the Philistines, it's going to be after the end of 18 years. So that's going to be that span of time. And then we're going to have six years. So, so it's very possible this line that we drew, even though it's a nice line, 
isn't the correct line based on what we have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this line. I'm just duplicating the slide here. So now we have the exact same slide. So this is the duplicate of it. And uh, we're going to get rid of these dates here. So they're still on the other line. OK. And um, well, maybe I should do it differently. I'll just put question marks in here. So let's try structuring a line. And I'm not saying that you know the other line is wrong. I'm just saying, can we construct a different line? And would this line make more sense? So I'm going to get rid of this here. I don't know if any of this is significant. Um, this definitely would change this symbol of the six years, if we're going to put this as November 9th, 2019. So let's see if we can do that. Go 11.9. Okay, simpler. <clears throat> so we got 11.9, and we say this is the time of the end. So that means this darkness that we have here would be from uh 9 11 2 get like that 9 11 to 11 That makes sense. Hi, Dwight. Good morning. Um, so what we've done is I made a copy of this line of Jephthah. And I'm just going to review quickly here. So the name of Jephthah, the Hebrew number is 3316. If you double 3316, that's the number of days between September 11th and November 9th. It's 18 years, technically 18 years and two months. Um, but it says that this oppression occurs for 18 years. And so we're saying that this Philistine oppression here is from September 11th to 11.9. And also we note that there are 3,316 days from March 7th, 2021 to April 5th, 2030. So this number here, 3316, um, if it's not doubled, uh, and March 7th, 2021 is um, when we started the study on examining the foundation. So that's from that study. And it's also 1700 years anniversary of the Sunday law on March, 20, March 7th, 321 AD so that there are 1,316 days to April 5th, 2030, I think is significant. So what we did is I copied this line, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to look at these 18 years of darkness, Philistine oppression, and say, does that represent the 18 years? Um, and I could do it like this, 18 years of darkness that looks nice so 18 years of darkness from 911 to 119 means that judges um, 1 verse 4 or 11 verse 4 part of me is when this battle occurs and and so we're going to start there so that would be um, uh, on November 9th, not June 22nd, uh, 2014. And it came to pass in process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. So what's happening is they're under Philistine oppression, but the children of Ammon are going to make war against Israel. Right? 
That's what's happening in the story of Jephthah. Now that's because they're going to repent. So there is a repentance that goes on there. In uh, Judges chapter 10. Okay, so there's lots of different ideas that we could look at, lots of different directions we could go here. I didn't mean to go in this direction at all. It was just studying uh, the number, Hebrew number of Jephthah, that I noticed these structures. Now, one thing we should note here, uh, Judges 10.10. 10. What's the significance of 10.10? 10? So this is going to be, uh, they're under the, the hands of the Philistines and the children of Ammon, right? And we talked about in chapter uh, 10, verse 8, that in that year, they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel 18 years. And all the children of Israel that were on the other side, Jordan, in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah and against against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim so that Israel was sore distressed and then it says the children of Israel cried unto the Lord saying we have sinned against thee both because we have forsaken our God and also served Balaam so there's going to be this repentance that occurs and the Lord said unto the children of Israel did not I deliver you from the Egyptians from the Amorites from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines but the Zidonians also and the Amalekites and the Minoites did oppress you, and you cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us. Only we pray thee this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. And the children, or the people and the princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So they want to have a leader. And that leader is going to be Jephthah. Now, so I asked the question, what is the symbol Judges 10.10? 10? What is the symbol here? Ten ten. What is the symbol? Tenth day of the tenth month. Right. Tenth day of the tenth month, which in 587 BC is the start of the siege. It's actually the date that is being predicted by Ezekiel, right? That he's, he's going to predict uh, this siege, right? So um, that's going to be Ezekiel 24, verse 1. Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, month and the tenth day of the month the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man write thee the name of the day even this same day the king of babylon set himself against jerusalem this same day and um this word here is actually uh, the same as self same day um that is it's a specific date uh the tenth day of the tenth month and it was on the 10th day of the fifth month that he um, uh, was given this in, and that's going to be in 2020 when he has the vision on the 10th day of the fifth month. So this is referring to the 10th day of the month, right? So 
it's a whole other study there dealing with this self same day. But that's the same idea, the self same day. So it's a specific date, the tenth day of the month is being marked here. And he's supposed to write this down, right? So so he's taking a note of this tenth day of the tenth month, the symbol of the siege. Yeah, so the self-same day of December 25th, 21, and 2022. Yes. So when we look at this term self-same day, it's generally considered an anniversary day. It is, it's either the anniversary, a monthly anniversary, or a yearly anniversary. It's some kind of anniversary. Because literally in Hebrew, it's the bone day, this bone day. Um, uh, and it's ze. Et sem yom, right? That's what it says in Hebrew. <clears throat> so it's the self same day. It's mostly translated here. It's not, but it is the same same phrase. Now, um, so I want to show you this here. So just hang on. So I'm going to deal with this name of Jephthah again. So we're looking here at, at this calendar converter, and we're going to go to 9-11. So we're going to go to 2001, September uh, 11th. Now, if we go to the end of the day, so this is obviously the start of the day, midnight, but we're going to go to the end of the day. So we're just going to go one day, and then we're going to count... Uh, 33, 16 days. Actually, I guess we have to actually go to the beginning. So I'm going to go back. So we actually just go to the beginning of September 11th. That's what we do. So we're going to do this. 31, 16 from September 11th. So that's from Jephthah. There we go. And we get October 10th. Now, October 10th is... The first day of the seventh month. You see that there, Tishri 1 at the top. So October 10th is the 10th day of the 10th month. Right? We can see that. And we can see that it's also the first day of the seventh month. So that's the beginning of the year, Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so if I save that date, we'll see it's 3116. Now what I'm going to do is go to the end of the day. So I'm just going to add one day. So I'm going to the end of October 10th. And then I'm going to count 33, 16 days again. And that will bring me to November 9th. Right? So that's what we can do with the name of Jephthah. So it brings me to the siege, which is halfway. And then... Again, I go from the end of that day of the siege, symbolically, and it brings me to November 9th. So is that significant? So you can see the 3116. Right. And then from November 9th, we go to this 252 days. Um, so we're going to do 52, uh, which is going to give us July 18th. So I'm just going to put July 18th in there. And then we're going to go, if we go 252 again, we would come to March 27th. Okay. Now I could just count from March 27th, uh, 33, 16 days. And that will bring me to uh, uh, Nissan 21 in 2030. Now, what's Nissan 21? Twenty first day of the first month. Okay, it's the twenty first day of the first month, but it's also the end of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the last day, right? Correct. Okay. Now, if I go of course, back to um, Nissan 1. I'm going to put this in here. It's obviously going to be 20 days difference. See over here. 
But if I count back from Nissan 1, April 5th, and I do this 30, 33, 16 days, so I'm going to subtract it. That's going to be bring me to March 7th, 2021. So that's going to be when we start this, uh, the study of examining the foundation. So whether this means, you know, anything particularly, uh, uh, this last part, I think it's very interesting that we can do this 13, 33, 16 days. But I would think the first part here, this 18 years and two months, becomes more significant. Right. So that's going to bring us from September 11th, 2001 to November 9th, 2019. But the center of that is the 10th day of the 10th month, the day of the siege. Now, as far as what happens in 2010, um, you know, on October 10th, I have no idea. I don't know what's happening in the movement I because I don't come into the movement until the following month. Um, so that is, I'm going to go to the camp meeting in Oklahoma in 2010, but that's going to be in November. Right. So it's not going to be till uh, November 7th, uh, Jeff's birthday, that I meet Jeff in Oklahoma. So this is going to be whatever it is, um, 28 days, whatever, after the 10th, 27 days. Right. So, but as a symbolic date, being Rosh Hashanah, um, you know, we, we should be able to... Um, uh, so I'm just going to note here uh, the 10th day, the 10th month, that is, maybe I'll do it this way, uh, October 10th, 2010, is first day of the seventh month. And this is going to be midway, uh, so I'm going to put this up here, sorry. Okay. Are people happy with what we're doing here? I mean, it's what I'm doing, but you're following. Is this making sense? That I'm going to take this 18 years, I'm going to look at this midway date, and this midway date is going to be repentance in this case. <clears throat> it's going to be... October 10th, 2010, first day of the seventh month, just symbolically the center of these 18 years. It would seem to fit. Okay. And so it gives us this frame for this period of darkness that is way marks that we already have. And it's just taken from Jephthah's name. And it allows us to put the 10th day of the 10th month, October 10th, 2010, which is the first day of the seventh month. It helps us to put that in the center. So it gives us a reason for doubling that uh, number of Jephthah's name, right? Because it gives us a mirror. And, and we can just take out that 10th day of the 10th month because we're counting up to that day and then after that day, 33, 16 days. And then we also have this additional symbol that from the start of the study of examining the foundation, that is 3,316 days to April 5th, 2030. So Jephthah is going to witness to this period of time from 9-11 to 11-9, but it's also going to witness to uh, our studies that are pointing to April 5th, 2030. To me, it seems to make sense. Mm -hmm. 
So, so if we take 11.9 as an increase of knowledge, and, and so now we have to look at what this darkness is too, because if we're going to have an increase of knowledge, we have this 18 years of darkness, and now we're going to come to November 9th. But this seems to, to be a good date to go to, to start a time at the end, because we know that September 11th and 11.9, we've come to understand they're the same way, Mark. Right? Different lines, but the same way, Mark. Agreed. Okay. And so um, when we when we look at this Philistine oppression and then this conflict with the Ammonites, um, now the Philistines, we know those are not related, though they do have this false worship <laughs> that the Israelites uh, continually regress to. Okay, so the word April comes from the Latin word meaning to open, just as the name Jephtha means to open. That's interesting. Okay. And um, so if we have an increase of knowledge, that increase of knowledge may be, must be based upon what this message is. And the message of 11.9, we've looked at in other lines. The 273 is one of the things that's being presented, the connection with the Mayan calendar. Um, now, obviously, Tess and Parminder looked at this as the close of probation for the priests, which is let him that is righteous be righteous still, but we countered that. That's not what this message is about. Um, and uh, so, so we have this 18 years of darkness, now, we have some symbols here. That is, we have this 10th day of the 10th month symbol that, that comes from this. That is, that's when they're going to repent. And um, so I don't know how we could address that repentance. Because we have here the time of the end is 11-4. Uh, that's when they're going to call Jephthah. But during this period of time, um, it is a period of darkness, but there is also repentance, right? So we have that there in the midway, but we're just going to say uh, simply, uh, we'll do it this way. Um, 2010 um, repentance. Now, can we put repentance at uh, 2010? Okay, Angela says the three tens in, uh, that is October 10th, 2010. I was kind of wondering that about that myself. Um, I don't know what it means. It looks, I don't know about a computer code. Um, it's not really quite an IP address, though. Uh, you know, I understand what you're saying. But, I mean, lots of them could look that way. It's just that it's 10, 10, 10. Um, so maybe what I'll put here is... We'll put that there, 10, 10, 10, whatever that means. Just to... Um, so Iran says this is a common network prefix for internal network. Can you explain that? I don't know what you mean. Very interesting. Um, not much so beyond that. Internal? Right? Just, yeah. yeah. Like an internal versus external network. Okay. So prefix, so that means you'll have 10, 10, 10 to show that it's an internal network. Is that is that also something that would reference a VPN? A virtual private network? Um, 
uh, I don't know if it has to be virtual, but maybe it, you, you could assign it to a virtual network. Okay. Okay. But the idea here is that this is internal. Right. Okay. So, so this symbol, this date is marking uh, repentance. It's, it's midway, right? But it's, it's marking a repentance that, that is occurring in this 18 years of darkness. And, and we can say that that is occurring. Repentance is occurring. But it's internal. It is it something within the movement? And when we get to November 9th, um, obviously not everybody has been, you know, repenting, I guess. But um, it points to that that's what the work that is being done from November 9th. Uh, or from September 11th to November 9th. And this would accord with what we already have with this line uh, when we connect it to um, Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. Right. So. so in our judges line, we have Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. That's going to be 9-11. We're going to have this work here from 9-11 uh, to Gideon. This is going to be a work of repentance within the movement. And so we get to 9-11. Now we're saying that Jephthah is December 6th. Now remember when we deal with the, the lantern, the candlestick, um, the first angel empowered and the second angel formalized are connected with branches, right? Same with the first angel formalized and the second angel empowered. Also, the first angel is connected to the third angel. So what we're connecting here is 11-9 with December 6th. And this makes sense then, right? See what I'm saying? In That we're going to start the line of Jephthah, even though this is addressing December 6th, it's going to go back to 11-9 as a line, right? Because we're zooming into Jephthah, but Jephthah isn't just December 6th. It has to have a line itself. And this, I think, makes the most sense to go back to November 9th. Okay. Let's go through this quickly. So, look at all these charts. So this line looks quite a bit different than this line. So, but this is this is how we're doing it. We're we're marking this line. We're not going to get rid of this. Uh, this is an alternative way of interpreting Jephthah. But it's just we've created more work for ourselves. Okay, so if this is the darkness, we know that there's a repentance that goes on and that the time of the end is going to be 11-9. We need, still need to define this darkness and this increase of knowledge that leads to Judges 11, 5 to 10. Now, one of the things that, that happens with 11-9 that we can say is that the message of... July 18th is going to be made prominent. That is, I, I would say that on November 9th, the movement officially adopts July 18th. Obviously, Jeff is teaching that before then. But once November 9th, Jeff's prediction that Tessa's and Parminder's prediction is going to fail, uh, the movement has uh, is going to move to July 18th. And we know, we've talked about this in the other lines, is that November 9th, we have these people who are saying, no more time, we don't want to have anything to do with dates. And they're hoping that when November 9th passes, that, and they're pleading with Jeff to say, like, don't do anything with Jeff July 18th, you're just going to be making the same error as Parminder, you know, you're predicting time, you know, don't do it, right? And so when Jeff really goes 
completely for July 18th and they make the plans and they, they do the publications and all those things, many of those people are just going to leave the movement. They're not going to have anything to do with what Jeff is doing, right? <clears throat> So um, if we look at the verses that we have, uh, back here. <clears throat> so we know that, that Jephthah prior to this, if Jephthah is the message, of July 18th in some way. He's connected with this July 18th. We said it's the message of time, right? So that's why in the other line we had said this had to do with the symbolic use of time. So I don't think that other line is wrong. So the first line we did of Jephthah, I still think is valid. But I do think that we can look at this line in another way. And so we have this symbol of January 11th, and we know that January 11th is connected with November 9th. Um, so if we're going to say a formalization of this message occurs, um, I would say the best way to look at this formalization is to say that it has to do with January 11th. So I don't know. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? That that January 11th thing, we had it in the other line. Um, but we had it as the empowerment of the message. It's 20, 30 days from June 22nd, 2014. So let's go over here. Right? So in this line of Jephthah, we had marked June 22nd, 2014, because this was going to be uh, where we're going to take this symbol of dates, first day of the fifth month, all of this kind of stuff, and we're going to place it there as this is the time of the end. Right? Now, on this line, we're saying, no, it's November 9th is the time of the end. But November 9th is 63 days before this January 11th date. Um, so if we put January 11th here. January 11th, 2020. We put it here. Um, this would be a formalization of this message. Now, uh, what's going to happen here is that... Um, We're going to have another date that is an empowerment of this message. So obviously it's not going to be 20, 30 days from November 9th. But uh, so, so January 11th, um, you know, now Jeff is going to, so when does Jeff acknowledge January 11th? Do you remember the date, what it was? Anybody remember? And I just some comments in the chat. Okay. Okay. So, yes, we also have the symbol of January 11th there with the, the three tens. So you can see the 111 there, or 10, 10, 10 is 111. That's, that's rather interesting. I mean, we could still, you know, put this as the empowerment of the message. But then, you know, what would be the formalization of that message? <clears throat> yeah. 
Is there anything that happens between November 9th, 2019 and January 11th, 2020? That is of significance. But we can say it's a formalization. Now, the question is, when does Jeff recognize this? And we figured it out before. Um, does anybody remember? You can probably find it by just looking through our charts. His talk on the Levitical chiasm. Yeah, so that is what I want to figure out. Um, I know that Odilio had sent a email to me, so maybe I can just quickly find it. He sent an e email with the, because uh, when Jeff had figured this out, he also had um, uh, September 19th, what's that? It's definitely not on a September 19th. September of 2019. Oh, September 2019. No, it's going to be figured out after January 11th, 2020. Um, I believe it was in March. Yeah, so on March 27th, oh, let me see here. No, that's not it. Not the one. Mm -hmm. so it must be back here. Because I, I believe it was in March. I believe uh, that it was in March. I can't find it quite now. So I don't know when that was, but uh, I mean, that would probably be the best date to mark as an empowerment. Um, let's see if I got here. So September, no. So I'm pretty sure it was in 2020. Um, I know it should be easier to find. Okay, I think I can find it here. <laughs> um. So I'm going to have to find it. So sorry about that. But I believe it's in March of 2020, but I just don't know when. Now, what we had marked here in this other one was these verses. So verses 5 to 10. So let's take a look at this. Um, and it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tov. And they said unto Jephthah, come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are ye come unto me now when ye are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be of your head? Shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Um, so we took those verses and we applied them uh, in our first line. We had applied them to uh, October 22nd, 2014. So the way that we had looked at this is we had taken 
this message dealing with the symbolic use of time. Let's go back to the chart. And we said, well, the symbolic use of time, the first day of the fifth month, we get on June 22nd, 2014. And then we have the camp meeting in the fall, in which I'm there. And we're just marking that as this period of time where this message of chronology comes to the movement. It's now being uh, addressed. It's a formalization of that. And then it's going to be empowered on January 11th, 2020, right? That's what we said. Now, if we go here in this line and we mark January 11th, 2020 as a formalization, uh, the empowerment of this message that arrives on November 9th, I mean, this seems to be more about the Levitical chiasm than anything, right? I mean, I would be want to put uh, March 27th, 2021, or 2020 here. And that's just the center of this Levitical chiasm. Now, what Jeff is going to do, he's going to count from January 11th, 2020. He's going to count 63 weeks to March 27th, 2021. But I would just put March 27th, 2020 here. Now, this is going to be symbolically at the start of the pandemic. So I don't know. But it's, it's also the symbol of the center of this chiasm. Now, I know it's around this date that Jeff presents the Levitical chiasm. I'm pretty sure it's like March 26th, 7th, or 8th. It's around there. Um, so, so obviously, it's not going to be 2,000, how many days this is, and whether that's what matters or not, I don't know. But I just put it there just to to look at it, so it's a certain number of days, uh, January, February, March, so that's like another year. Another 77 days or something to the 63. Yeah, so it's like 77 days, I think. 76 days. Um, probably 76 days from January 11th. It's 139 days otherwise. So, I mean, if, if I'm going to go here, I think it's 139 days. We'd have to check that. <clears throat> okay. Um, whether that's significant. But, but anyway, we just have that there. We're going to put March 27th. It's the center of the Levitical chiasm. And I know on March 27th, we address that whole idea of the Levitical chiasm. And because of what happens on March 27th, dealing with the 100 days of prayer, we're going to mark that date. Okay. So now, um, now this date here that we're marking is the 11th day or, 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 or date is the verse that we're noting is 11.11. So we had before that 11.11 was that empowerment of the message. And it was also the arrival of the message. But that verse addressed both points. <clears throat> so what would we do with this? So if we look at these verses, this verse, 11.11, uh, this is simply, then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all the words before the Lord in Mizpah. All his words before the Lord in Mizpah. <clears throat> so 
So then um, we have this verse. We say it's the empowerment of the first message and it's the arrival of the second. So he went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him head and captain over them. So if this has to do with the Levitical chiasm, the center of it, um, what is this saying about the message of Jephthah? How is that related? And and what hast thou to do with me? Uh, what do we see here? And And then... And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mitzvah. So that would be the arrival. So we're taking these two way marks and we're using the same verse. So Judges 11, 11. So what date is this? that he utters all his words in Mizpah. Now, what is Mizpah? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, a watch? No, no, that's how I understand Mitzvah. Oh, watchtower, right? That's what you mean by watch, right? So this is a watchtower. So what would this watchtower be? If we're going to say it's the arrival of the second age message, he's going to utter all of his words in mitzvah. When is the message of Jephthah? When is that when does he utter all of his words? The other thing is we have to think about, you know, what this first message is. So this first message appears to be regarding the Levit Levitical chiasm. Right? And in order to receive this second message, we have to be, be benefited by the first message. And so the second message arrives somewhere in this line after March 27th, 2020. And we have a symbol 1111. Now we know 1111 has a lot of significance. It's the 11 generations to the flood and 11 generations to going into Egypt. It's Daniel 1111. Okay, so Angela says, utter all his words as in the publication of warning, 621-22-2020. So is everybody happy with that? That we're going to say that he publishes, that he utters all of his words. This is the warning to Nashville. Now, the thing that we would have to do is we would say, well, why is this warning to Nashville connected to this Levitical chiasm. Because I agree, it's, it's, um, it's this date, June, and, and we're just going to put um, June 22nd. It's obviously 21st and 22nd, 2020. But he's going to publish all his words in Mitzvah, in the Watchtower, right? To put, put mitzvah there. Sometimes they put a S instead of a Z, but put mitzvah. So this is mitzvah. It's publishing all of his words. It's the Tennessean, the publication of the Tennessean. Okay. 
Okay. So that makes sense to people. But the question is still, why is the publication in the Tennessean connected to uh, the acceptance of this Levitical chiasm? What, what's the connection? I'll put it as mitzvah because. It's a different way to spell it differently. There's different ways to spell it. Anyway, I'm getting picky about nothing. Didn't like that one. Okay, so we got mitzvah. It's a publication. How is this connected to the Levitical chiasm? So we know the Levitical chiasm has to do with the message to the Levites. And this Levitical chiasm goes all the way back to time, right? June 9th, 2018, 63 days to August 11th, another 63 days to October 13th, 329 days to September 7th, and then 63 days to November 9th, and then another 63 days to January 11th, and then uh, 63 days, and is that right? Um, I don't know why I have 139 there. Somebody should check the counting of those days there. So 63 days plus 76, that'd be 139, right? So 139 days. So I believe it's 63, then 76. Um, and then uh, from March 27th to June 22nd, it's, Less than three months, it's about 80 some days, 86 days, I guess. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, so if we go, uh, I'm just going to check some of these dates here. If we go from November 9th. So we know it's 63 days. March 27th. Okay, so it's 226 days then further. So it's 87 days to the 22nd, 86 to the 21st. Um, it's 163 days from January 11th to June 22nd. Um, so it's 100 226 days from November 9th to June 22nd. So the number of days, so this I think is one I'll put as significant. So from here to here is... Yes. So is that significant? Two hundred and twenty six days from November ninth to June twenty second. Yep. Okay. Okay, so that would be significant. We would we can say 
Obviously, this number is wrong, whatever this is. <clears throat> but we can put this number of days here as significant. <clears throat> okay. There we have uh, a connection between this, those two dates, which I don't think I've noticed before. Um, so June 22nd, 2020. So that's the center of Levitical chiasm. It's not, it's not June, or pardon me, not the Levitical chiasm. It's the center of um, uh, the June 22nd. It's not the center. It's uh, connected to the June. So we have... have the center of the 777 chiasm. That's the chiasm that goes from, remember we have June 22nd, 2011, $163,000. Uh, so I'm gonna put this here as a note regarding June 22nd. Like this. So June 22nd, so maybe I'll do it like this, 6, 22, 11. That's going to be $165,000. And then we got uh, June 22nd, 2014. Whoops, shouldn't put question marks there. So comment in the chat. Okay, 622 to 718 is 26 days, so to 252. Okay. So that means 226 plus uh, 26 is 252, right? So there's just that extra 26 days, Angela notes in the chat. Okay, so this is, um, we're going to say this is 622. This is Ezra 7.9. Just say that's what that is. And then 622, 2017 is it's the center of 777. So that's the 777 chiasm. And then, then we have now 6, 22, oops, 20, 20. And that's going to be Ten uh, cm. Is that a spot? Ten cm. Well, you need a capital T. Two S's. <clears throat> okay. So we can say that this is the significance of this. So I can just put the six twenty-two days here. I don't need to put that there. I can just have that in that note, 226 days. So this means that the message of Jephthah is primarily about the proclamation of this message of time. Now, we have at the top six years. <laughs> now that six years had to do with when we were starting in 2014. Right, so, I mean, if we, we're not counting six years here now. So in this one, we have to change that. But we don't know what the end date is yet. 
the arrival of the third message. Now, um, it might be December 6, 2020, just like it is in the other line. I don't know. But um, if we look at June 22nd, 2020, this is going to be the proclamation about July 18th, right? The, the, we make this public, right? This movement makes a message public. And so that second angel arrives. Um, so I do think that we could look at this line that we created above, and there we're going to have the formalization as June 22nd, 2020. Um, but we could easily put in um, some other dates there. All right, so... So December 6th shows up in many of our lines. Here it's showing up as the arrival of the third message in this, in this diagram. In this diagram, we haven't placed it there yet. But we know that this, this is a zoom into December 6th, 2020, because um, that's the way market is in the line of the judges. And we could see why it then would go back to this proclamation as the arrival of the second message. So it must lead to, I would still say that we would put December 6th. Um, I'll do it differently. Just do it simply as 12, 6, 20. I'll make that to this one twenty six. Still takes it to some percent. Yeah. Okay, so there we have December sixth. It's the symbol of the one twenty six. It's the arrival of the third message. We're going to have to come back to this tomorrow and uh, address what is the formalization and empowerment from the verses that are given. Right. So the verses that are given are going to deal with Jephthah and his vow, and everything's going to be involved in there. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Are we happy with this line so far, recreating this line? So mitzvah has the symbols for the Sunday law. So this is in the chat. Um, uh, 457920. That is, if you, now, um, now you counting mitzvah with an A or an E? I just copied it from the Bible as, as M-I-Z-P-A-H. A-H? So it's not... It's like that. That's how you at have least it. at least that's how it is in Genesis thirty one forty nine. Ah, uh, yeah, because I know they spell it differently different places. Um, yeah, so in Judges eleven eleven, it's with an e. Um, so that would change it, but uh, in in Judge, if you take it as Mizpah, M I Z P E. Right, so you had it as A E. A H. A H, but yeah, A H, and I have it as E H. Um. So if you spell it as Mizpah, like it is in eleven eleven, uh, the normal sum is seventy seven. So, which is kind of interesting, but. But you had it M I Z P A H. Yeah. Or did you? Okay, and then you got these numbers four five seven nine two zero. So what I, was that? That's just based on the position in the Bible because it's um, nine twenty three and three zero one eight zero in reverse.
Okay. So yeah, that's rep the three zero one eight zero is three is a three eighteen, and the nine twenty three is like the prime of okay. seven cubed. Okay. Okay. So you're just so you're taking the verse. What are you doing? So where do you get four five seven nine two zero? Is what I'm asking. That's that's related to three eighteen because it's three three. 318 days is that many minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. And prime 7 times 7 times 7, where it first occurs in Genesis 31, 49. Okay. I'm not sure if I fully understand all of that yet. Um, okay. So, anyway, Mizpah with an E, if we just look at the gematria, is 77. Um, so there's some things here we're going to have to look at. Okay, so thanks, everyone. We're going to close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study here this morning and um, for helping us to see things that we couldn't see before. And we just ask that you can continue to be with us in this study in our personal time as we reflect upon these things. And um, we ask that you can bring us together again to study your word according to thy will. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.